So for the past year or so, I've pretty much, I would say almost exclusively, I've been using my iPhone. In this case, it's an iPhone 15 Pro Max for my photos. It is true what they say. The best camera is the one you always have with you. I always have that thing with me. I don't always have my Sony camera with me. And I've just enjoyed the challenge of seeing just how far I can push my photography using the iPhone plus computational photography. So using software to make the photo look better as well. Now, here's the thing. Even though the main camera sensor on this phone is 48 megapixels, if you use either of the other two camera lenses, and this is true with pretty much the 14 and the 15 Pro models, you'll go from 48 to 12 megapixels. Also, if you use a camera app, like I use the Reflex app, if you set your ISO, for example, or you set your shutter speed, basically, if you do anything other than the auto exposure mode, you're going to go from 48 megapixels to 12 megapixels. I don't know why this is, but uh, I really hope that Apple does give us that functionality next year. The thing is, even though 12 megapixels is more than sufficient for virtually all of my needs, there are times when I want to crop in and that's when having 12 megapixels can show its limitations. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how I use a combination of Lightroom and we're gonna stick with Lightroom local. We're, we're not gonna use Lightroom cloud. We're gonna use Lightroom on the desktop. I've already transferred over one of the photos from my iPhone. I'm gonna show you how I can upscale it using two different methods. The first will be with Topaz Photo AI, which is what I've used for years. Before that, it was Topaz Gigapixel AI, but um, Topaz Photo AI to increase the resolution while adding some detail and then editing the photo in Lightroom. And then the other way is built into Lightroom, even in the local mode, and that's called Super Resolution. I did a video on that years ago when it was first announced. And while that has a bit less option, it is, built into Lightroom. So if you don't have Topaz Photo AI, uh, you might want to check that out as well. So with that, let's jump over here. Before we do, really quickly, if you're into this stuff, if you want to kind of get more into mobile photography and especially the Lightroom cloud ecosystem, there is a link to my free newsletter. I send out an email every week, totally free. But if you're into this stuff, check out the link. It's a lot of fun. All right, let's get started. Okay, so the first thing I wanna bring up, as you can see, we are in local mode and local is one of the biggest additions to Lightroom since this version of the app was released. I have a video going through why that's so important, how you can use it, so be sure to check that out. And you can also see I have cloud. Cloud is where I work 99.9% .9 of the time. You can see every photo from 2010 on, over 130,000 of them are synced to the cloud. This is where I do all of my work, but local is also super important. So basically all I really did here was I sent the photo, even though it's in cloud here, I have that photo here in my cloud storage. I exported it as a DNG, which is the original file format. I exported it right here to my desktop. And so here, because we are using the local browse and we're looking at the desktop folder, you can see this is the image. Now, a few things that I wanna show you. First, if you look at the info panel over here, you can see that this is a 12 megapixel photo and it was taken with my iPhone 15 Pro Max. I also used the Reflex app, which is a fantastic pro camera app for the iPhone because it gives me more control over setting my ISO and shutter speed and other uh, variables for the photo. But what I wanna do is I actually wanna crop in. So if I were to just crop in right now without doing anything, let's just go here. Uh, and I'll show you kind of the overall composition that I want, something like right around, I, I wanna get it kind of tight on this bird over here. So if, now nah, let's bring it over and kinda like, kinda like that, something around there. Because I don't really need all of the trees in the foreground and I, I wanna bring focus to the bird. Now, if I go to the info view here, you can see that we've, really kind of cut down our resolution. And if I zoom in, you can see that it's got a lot of aliasing, which is that those kind of jaggy edges, and it's just kind of low resolution, which is what you would expect, right? So what I'll do now is I'll go to the crop mode over here, and I'm gonna click on this icon, which will reset the crop because uh, I don't want to do that right now. I wanna work with the full resolution image. And then I'll click on the crop icon to go out of the crop mode. Now I'm back to my original unedited photo, and again, you can see it's already here on the desktop. Now, on your computer, that photo might be anywhere else. It can be in a different folder on your internal drive or it can be on an external drive that's connected to your computer. 
with local, you can navigate anywhere in Lightroom and make your edits. But because I want to do my upscaling first, I'd rather do that with the original photo. So all I did was navigate to where it is on my computer. And in this case, again, it's on my desktop. So I'm gonna right click on this photo. I'm gonna go to open with, and I'm gonna send it to Topaz Photo AI. All right, so in Topaz Photo AI, you can see that by default, the autopilot AI decided to upscale the image by 6X. Now this is a bit much, I don't need a 6X upscale. So what I'm gonna do is click on this disclosure triangle to have more options. I think 4X will be more than sufficient here. And the next thing that I usually do after I select the upscale factor is determine which AI model will work best. And if you hover over this little eye over here, you'll see a tool tip pop out. And the one that I typically look at is high fidelity because the description specifically calls out smartphone images. Now you'll want to definitely zoom in to get a better idea of what this is doing. So I'm gonna go ahead and change my zoom to 200%. And then I'm gonna take the focus box from the navigator and I'll put it right over here. And so you can see that it actually does a pretty good job of upscaling and smoothing out those alias edges. But there is that weird kind of artifact. So the first thing I'm gonna do is select a different model. By default, it's selected standard. So let's see if high fidelity gives us a better result. And it does, it actually gives us a much better result. That kind of halo that we have there is gone, which is why it's important to check these other models. You could also look at low resolution. I find that low resolution will make it over sharp. And you can see it here, it is kind of over sharp. So I'm gonna stick with high fidelity. I'm also gonna zoom out of it because I don't need to see like that close of an image here at 100%, it's actually a lot better. And I'm gonna bring it over because I also wanna see how the tree is improved. And you can see it actually is improved nicely. We have a lot more detail. The other thing that I'll do is I'm gonna play with this minor D blur slider. This is what is being used to add a little bit of sharpening. So I'll bring this to zero to see what happens when nothing is added. And you can see if I click and hold, just a little bit of sharpening is added, then I will bring it to 100 to see what full strength looks like. And it's actually not that bad, but it is a, a bit strong. So I'm gonna bring it back to like around 75. And that looks really good. Just again, if I go to the split screen view here, let's go to the tree. And you can see just how much detail has been added. And again, we were working with a 12 megapixel photo that we are upscaling by four times. If I go to the bird over here, let's see how that's improved. You can see there the alias edges are gone. We have nice smooth edges and there's still nice definition to the bird. And so really that's all I would do right now in Topaz Photo AI. I just want to use it for the upscaling. And because the AI model has the option to add a little bit of sharpening, I don't need to turn on the separate sharpen model and there is no noise here. So I don't need to use the noise reduction model. It's just upscaling, which is gonna give me a lot more resolution to work with when I do that heavy crop. So let's go back to it. So now all I'll do is go to save image and I'm gonna pretty much keep everything as is. One of the important things to note is that you can see that the original photo was 23 megabytes and we're now kind of blowing it up to 1.2 gigabytes. This is something to consider if you plan on syncing this photo to the cloud, which I'll show you a way to kind of get the best of both worlds where you can get your edited upscaled photo without taking up extra or unnecessary Adobe cloud space. So here, keeping everything as is, I'm gonna go and click on save. It's saving the DNG file because I have the preserve input format to the original folder, which was the desktop. So once this is done, I'll quit out of Topaz Photo AI. And you can see on the desktop, there is our upscaled photo. More importantly, if we go to Lightroom here and go to the grid view, you will see that the upscaled photo is automatically detected over here. Now, what does upscaling give us? Well, if we select the original photo and the upscaled photo and then go to the compare mode down here, all you really have to do is click to zoom in to see the difference. So you can see just how much that extra resolution gives you when you zoom in. This is the original, this is the zoomed in image. If I go over here, you can see it's, I mean, it's, it gives you a lot more to work with. So let's get out of this. Let's go back to grid view here and I'm gonna start working with this photo. So let's double click it. I'm gonna close the film strip over here and let's go to editing. So I'm not gonna do anything too crazy. Basically, I wanna make some edits to the sky and then make some edits to the foreground. But before I do that, let's go ahead and crop. That was the whole point of the upscaling. 
To do that, I'm gonna to go to crop over here, make sure that my aspect ratio is locked. Let's crop in, like I kind of showed you, something right around here. Maybe even a little bit tighter and bring it down just a little bit. Okay, so that, that's looking great. And again, if I zoom in, we still have tons of resolution. I mean, that's the greatest thing about this. The one thing I wanna do before I actually start doing my localized editing is get rid of this little stump over here. It's just bothering me. So I'm gonna to go to the healing panel here with the remove brush selected. I'll make a kind of a larger brush here and I'm just gonna make a selection like that. See how it does. Does a great job, except there's that one little artifact there. So let's click there. And there we go, stub is gone. All right, so now I've done basically all I wanna do in terms of the cloning, I'm ready to do my edits. So I said I'm gonna do these localized edits using masks. So the first thing I'll do is go to masking over here and I wanna start with the sky. So I'm gonna click on sky. And I have a video that I released a couple of weeks ago where I show you this really kind of funky way to get an even better sky selection because you can see if I hover over here, you see how the selection, it's, it's a great selection, but it also bleeds onto the tree branches and it's just, I don't know, it's not especially good. So my, basically my kind of secret process, and it's not so secret anymore, but what I do is I go and I click on subtract and I select sky again, and then I'll go to the sky to here, this subtraction, and I'm going to invert it. And now we have a much cleaner selection. You can check out the video. I'm going to put a card right here. So if you want to learn more about that technique, I highly recommend it. And so now I'm ready to edit just the sky. So here are the things I'm going to do. First, I'm going to go and I'm going to use the point color tool, which is available only on desktop. And it's awesome that you can use it in the masking panel here. I'm going to click on the dropper and I'm going to click on this blue here. And I want to make the blue a little bit punchier. So I'm going to increase the saturation of it. And I'm also going to move the hue. Then I'm also going to drop the luminance just a little bit. And so you can see here, if we toggle, I mean, in just a few slider clicks, how much better it is. The other thing that I'm gonna do is go to Dehaze, which is amazing for skies. It's gonna add a little bit more richness to the sky. And because the sky's getting a little dark, I'm gonna go up here to highlights and I'm gonna add a little bit more highlight to the sky. The other thing, if you want, if you really want to make the sky nice and kind of cool is you can go to the temperature slider here and bring it to the left just a tiny bit, not too much like that, but just a little bit. And I think that does a really nice job. You can see just adds a little bit of a cool tone to the sky. All right, we're done with the sky. And now I want to edit everything except for the sky. And the easiest way to do that is to go to the sky mask here, click on the ellipse, and then go to duplicate and invert mask. So it's gonna do exactly what it sounds like. It's gonna copy the mask and then it's gonna invert the selection. So because in this mask over here, the selection is the sky, when I click on this, I now have a kind of like a flip or an opposite mask. So now the tree, the birds, and the trees in the foreground on the bottom are selected. So for this, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna do the opposite. I'm gonna add a little bit of warmth to there, kind of adds a really nice color balance where we have a cooler sky and a warmer foreground. Then I'm gonna go over to effects here and I'm gonna add just a little bit of clarity and a little bit of texture because those are kind of texturized areas. And really that's all I wanna do in the mask mode. With the localized edits done, I can go ahead to the regular global editing and I'm just gonna add a quick S curve over here in my point curve. So I'm gonna up the highlights a little bit I'm going to deepen the shadows a tiny bit. Let's see with the midpoint. Ooh, that's looking, actually looks kind of cool right around there. And then I'm going to introduce a little bit of gray into the black point by taking the black dot over here, the black point dot, bringing it up. And I'm basically looking at the bird here. And once I start to see that gray, which you can see here is no gray. Once I start to see a little bit of that gray get introduced, I stop and it gives it this really kind of nice, almost like a film or retro look, which I'm a big fan of. And then to add kind of a uniform warm tone throughout the image, I'm gonna go to the blue channel here. And right here in the center, I'm just gonna drop down just a tiny bit here. 
introduce a little bit of a yellowy orange color in the midtone area. And so you can see if we toggle this eye over here, this is without any tone curve adjustments, and this is with the tone curve adjustments. Last thing I'll do is add a little bit of sharpening and vignette. Let's start with the vignette first because that is earlier on this editing panel here. So I'm gonna add just a little bit of a vignette. Let's bring it a little bit more towards the center here with this midpoint slider, and then let's add a really soft transition. Then for sharpening, you can see here a little bit of sharpening has already been added. You can zoom in on an area here. I recommend zooming in at 100%. Look at an area that should have sharpening and then press and hold on the Option or Alt key while dragging on the Amount slider here. So here's no sharpening. And you can see as we start adding it, because it's in a grayscale preview, it's easier to see the effect. And so you don't wanna to go too far. You can see that I'm starting to get a little over sharpening. So I'm gonna back off here. I'll zoom back out. And then I'm gonna do the same thing with the masking slider. I will drag out and while I'm dragging, I'll press and hold on the Option or Alt key. And what you wanna do is bring it out until you have what I would consider to be like a pencil sketch. So anything that's black will have the sharpening removed. Anything that's white will have the sharpening applied. And really that's all I'm gonna do to the photo. If I press and hold on the backslash key, you can see that is the original photo. It is cropped, but it has none of the edits. And then if I press it again, you can see there is our edits. And it, to me, it just looks great. All right, before we jump into using Lightroom to upscale your photos, just give me a quick minute to tell you about my course called Lightroom Everywhere. I am so proud of it. As far as I know, it is the only course out there that is exclusively focused on Lightroom desktop and mobile. It will teach you how to manage, how to edit, how to share all of your photos on all of your devices, whether it's your computer, your phone, or your tablet. I am so happy with the response that this course has gotten. You don't even have to take it from me. Click on the link in the description below and you can read actual student testimonials where they share how helpful the course has been for them as they moved from Lightroom Classic to Lightroom. So again, the link is in the description below. Your purchase directly helps support my small business. I am so grateful for that because it helps me continue to make these videos for you. So with that, let's check out Super Resolution. Okay, so to recap, we had the original photo here. This is the 12 megapixel iPhone photo. And then we have the upscaled version using Topaz Photo AI. And of course it has been edited. Now, let me show you what happens if you use super resolution, which is built into Lightroom and it allows you to upscale your photo without having to use any other apps. And one of the coolest parts about it is that you can use super resolution with the local browse mode. You don't have to upload your photo to the cloud first. It's here for you. All you do is select the photo, right click on it, and then go to enhance. And so you can see that super resolution is enabled here. We can't use raw details or the AI denoise because that's currently limited to specific types of raw and DNG files. But fortunately, we're not using those, so we just want to use super resolution. Now, if we click on the magnifying glass to zoom out and then click on an area that we want to focus on here, you can see this is a preview of what it will look like. If you click and hold, you can see the original lower res version, and then this is what it's going to look like after it's upscaled. Now, the easiest way for me to differentiate between super resolution and using a dedicated app like Topaz Photo AI for upscaling boils down to whether you want any sort of control. Because in super resolution, you have no control. What it's gonna do is it's gonna double the width and the height of your image. It's gonna essentially give you a, a double sized image. And as you saw in Topaz Photo AI, you have a lot more controls. You can do a 2X, a 4X, or a 6X upscale. You have uh, controls over how much sharpening to add as well as noise reduction, and you can add those other AI filters that they have. Super resolution has none of that, as you can see here. So while it's great to have a built-in upscale tool, which is, it's not free because you still have to pay for your Lightroom subscription, but it is built in, that might be great in a pinch. But if you are the kind of person who needs more control or you wanna have a little bit more say over exactly how you're upscaling your photo, that's where Topaz Photo AI would be more beneficial in my opinion. But let me show you what I mean here. So again, you can see we've got super resolution enabled, no options. All you can do is click enhance, which I'm gonna do. And you can see there is our new DNG file. You can tell it's been enhanced because it has that little sparkly icon over there. And if we go to the info view, we can look at the pixel count. So here is our 12 megapixel image. Here, the resolution has basically been doubled. 
and then this is quadrupled. Although it's not just been quadrupled, we have a little bit less resolution because we already cropped it in. Now, let's take the edits that I made here and apply them to these two photos. So with this image selected, I'm gonna click on the gear icon over here. I'm gonna make sure that everything is enabled. I don't need HDR enabled here, but I will ensure that masking and healing and crop are enabled because these are the three big things that we did to the photo. Then I'm gonna go ahead and click on copy and then I'll select these two photos and then click on paste edit settings. Now, because I don't have any masks on those two original photos, I'm gonna click on replace, but if you had masks and you wanted to add the mask that we copied from this photo, you'd click on merge. I'm gonna go ahead and click on replace. And now we have basically these three identical photos. Let's go ahead though and compare the super resolution version to the Topaz Photo AI version. So I'm gonna click on this and then click on this and let's go to compare. I'm also gonna collapse these side panels here so it'll give us a little bit more space. And then let's zoom in on the bird. So you can see again, we still have a lot more resolution and I would argue that even the edges around the bird with Topaz Photo AI are a little bit cleaner. We do have a little bit of that aliased edge over here if I'm being super picky, it's not that bad, especially for something that doesn't cost any extra money. And let's go ahead over here to look at the tree. And for the most part, I would still say that Topaz Photo AI is doing a better job here. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit instead of at 100%. Let's go to 66%. And as I pan around here, yeah, I mean, I would say that the Topaz Photo AI version gives me a better result. And of course it obviously gives me more resolution, but if all I had access to was super resolution, I certainly would not be upset about it. Now, let's say you want to store this photo in the cloud, either version of these photos. So if we go back, let's go to the grid view here and go to the Topaz Photo AI version. You'll remember that it really increased in file size. The original photo is 22 megabytes over here and the upscaled version is 1.17 gigabytes. Even the super resolution version increased in file size. It's a lot more manageable at 188 megabytes, but if this is the one you were keeping, 1.17 gigabytes, it's a lot of space. Every gigabyte counts when you have a finite cloud-based storage with anybody, including Adobe. So I'll show you a quick way to have the best of both worlds where you can keep your original and have a much smaller version synced to the cloud. So if I take this photo here and I go to the share icon and then go to custom settings for export, basically what I'll do is I'm gonna export as a JPEG at full size, 100% quality, and I'm gonna make sure that we have output sharpening set to screen with a standard amount and our color space is Pro Photo RGB. I'm gonna go ahead and export that to the desktop. You'll see that image appear over here once it's finished exporting. And there it is, and if I click on it, you can see that it is 25.8 megabytes. But more importantly, it's still that same full resolution as this one over here. If I double click here and then zoom in, you can see we have all of that resolution, it's just a JPEG. So. Now that we have that with our edits, I can go ahead and click on copy one photo to cloud here, then click okay. And now I'm gonna have that photo in the cloud available on all my devices. The one caveat obviously is that all of the edit history that we have over here with this photo will not transfer over. We basically bake them all in over here. So as long as you're okay with just having your edited photo, it'll be available for you on all of your devices. And it's gonna take a fraction of the cloud space. And that's really why I'm so excited about using my iPhone for my photography, because even though I'm using the smaller 12 megapixel sensor, I'm using all of the tools that I have at my disposal to get results that I am actually very proud of and am excited to share with my family and friends. And as you can see, they're pretty good. Like it doesn't absolve you from taking a bad photo or a poorly composed photo. That's always gonna be the first thing you need to focus on. But telling yourself, oh, I don't need to take as good of a photo because I'm just using my iPhone. I think that that reasoning can be thrown out the window. You can get amazing results with this device if you know how to use all the tools that you have at your disposal. So again, in closing, be sure to check out, I've got a few links in the description. The first is for my Lightroom Everywhere newsletter. 
Also for my Lightroom Everywhere course, if you wanna learn everything there is to know about this app. And then if you want to check out Topaz Photo AI, I've got a link there as well. If you wanna continue your video watching journey, that's wonderful. I've got this playlist here. It's got a bunch of other Lightroom videos for you to check out. If this video is helpful, as always, a thumbs up is appreciated, as is subscribing and clicking on the bell icon to be notified of all future videos. Thanks a lot, everyone.